Right, we are taking this thing on tour. Welcome to Italy, and more specifically, welcome to Tuscany. It's quite hurry in that hand, let's swap that over. Oh, it's a bit better. Okay, so if you're new to this channel, you know what to do. I'm just about to head over to Borgo Pignano to meet tomorrow's couple about their wedding. We're going to do a little bit of a run through and just talk about timings and the, the plans for the day. And if you, if you saw a couple of weeks on my channel, you'll notice that I put an episode out around um, just Q and A's. I asked everybody on Instagram just to put some questions out around the wedding photography industry. What do you want to know? And it seemed to go down quite well. I'll link to it up here so you can watch it if you haven't watched it. And I thought today I've got a couple of hours spare. So let's just do one on destination weddings. It's always a topic people want to know about. They've always got questions on it. So we're going to get over to the venue, do the run through. I'm just getting my car in my Lancia. That's a bit. Um, I'm in probably the world's worst rental car. Um, I don't even know what horsepower it is. I think it's like the, I don't even think they measure it in horsepower. I think it's like two cats. It's got the power of two cats. This one has just about made it up the hill yesterday. Um, but back to my point, I'm going to get to the venue, do the run through. And I've asked you guys on Instagram just to put some questions out. Whoa. Hello, Sam. I mean, that's great timing. Bit of Newcastle, bit of Newcastle in Tuscany. Okay. So I put it out to Instagram yesterday. Um, just letting you know that I was going to be doing this Q&A around destination weddings and I've got loads of questions so we're going to find a little corner of the venue somewhere, set up base camp and I'm going to work through your questions around destination weddings. Okay, welcome to Borgo Pignano, I think that's how you say it. What do you think? I mean, it's just the car park. Um, venue's over here. Done a little run through with a couple. Got a few little timing things to work through later on. And I'm gonna go and find a little spot somewhere in the corner. I'll go through a few of these Instagram questions about destination weddings. So you might have noticed that I've got changed and that is because um, it is actually Saturday and it's the day of the wedding. I went to film this yesterday, but every time I've tried to film it, somebody just kept coming in, interrupting me, waiters trying to set up tables. So I just canned it off and I thought, you know what, I'll try and do this in the half an hour before I start the wedding on the Saturday. So here I am. Um, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, um, I am Sam. I'm a wedding photographer based in the UK, but I have for the last seven or eight years, I've been shooting weddings all throughout Europe. So I've shot weddings in Italy, France, Spain, Ibiza, Mallorca, and even further afield, such as Antigua. And a couple of weeks ago, I put an episode out that I'll link to above, where I just put a, an open Q&A out to anybody on Instagram and just wanted to get, kind of answer some of your queries around wedding photography. And whilst I was here, I thought, you know what, it'd be good to do one just on purely on destination weddings. It seems to be a topic that always gets interest and people want to know about. So you guys have been busy on Instagram firing questions my way. And actually it was a good job I didn't do it yesterday because another handful of questions came in yesterday afternoon. So thank you to everybody that's put a question forward. I'm gonna try my very best now to answer as many as I possibly can. There's a few duplicates. So if I don't mention you, apologies, it's just because there's a bit of crossover. Um, so yeah, we'll get going. And if you're new here or you're um, you know, just stumbling across my work, you know what to do. You can hit subscribe, you can follow, you can like it, you can comment. Um, if you've got a question that you think is missing, put it in the comments below and I'll try and do another one in the future and get back to you as soon as I can. So um, I have found myself a little hidden away space in the venue. I'm on a rooftop, um, kind of a rooftop, but it's absolutely roasting actually up here. It's like a little oven, um, but I'm not going to get disturbed, hopefully. We have 360 degree views of Tuscany. So let's get this, let's get this episode on the road. Okay. So let's start off. Michelle Caster photograph, photography, photography, 
Michelle Castor Photography. What is the biggest issue for you when doing destination weddings? Um, I don't really, I don't know if there's an issue as such. I think the only, I think it's a blessing and a curse, I suppose, in, in a way, in that it's the unpredictability of international travel and weddings that is probably the only um, issue. And I say that because even, even coming here to Italy this week, you know, within the first 20 minutes of being on the motorway on the way to the airport, there was an accident and I hit standstill traffic for half an hour. And it gets your heart racing because you start to fear the worst and you panic. Um, there's also a huge amount of unpredictability with having a wedding abroad. Um, I, I genuinely think though it's that unpredictability that, that makes them so special and so unique. Um, and I'll always say to my couples, you know, just remember that it's sometimes those things that don't quite go to plan that make the memory. Um, and you have to just make the most of make, make the most of the experience because before you know it, it's over in the, in a flash. So, not not an issue as such, but maybe just a bit of travel stress can sometimes be the um, be the, mo the be the only kind of issue that you encounter. Photos by Kira, getting your foot in the door so damn hard to start. So there's a few people that I think have asked this, and I'm going to start off by saying there is no. There is no secret ingredient or magic or something that you know we're, we're keeping from you that is going to be a, a, a ticket to getting destination weddings. Um, for me, it comes through a few approaches. And first off is just making sure that your work reflects that of um, what, what people want from a destination wedding, which is relaxed, informal. Um, and you have to remind yourself why are people going abroad to get married and it's often because they don't want that traditional classic wedding um, so if your work straight off the bat shows traditional classic church english weddings then it doesn't matter how good that photography is clients that land on your site that are getting married in italy or france are going to find it jarring and they're going to find it difficult to associate to that kind of or to aspire to that kind of imagery so even if you're shooting weddings in the UK, you can still show and curate your work to make it look and feel as though it's a destination wedding by showing the really relaxed and informal, candid portraits that you, that you have in your work and steering clear of those classic English traditional weddings. Um, the next thing is to remind yourself that, you know, when you got into wedding photography, what did you have to do? How did you get into it? You know, you put work out, you shout about it, you might have paid for some sort of advertising or featured on some blog somewhere. The same applies to destination weddings. You have to put it out there. Like, don't be afraid or ashamed to say, I want to shoot destination weddings. Like, you know, just put it out there. I'm a big believer in, you know, maybe not, maybe, maybe not quite manifestation, but certainly doing things that are going to um, attract a client. And that means, sometimes that just means shouting about it and just telling people quite literally that you want to do destination weddings. I can remember my first one came because I'd paid for a feature in a blog um, on a, a French wedding blog. And it was an Australian couple, Carla and Jeremy. They found me through that. They liked my work because it aligned with the kind of imagery they wanted to create for their wedding. And, and then I just gave them an offer they couldn't refuse. You know, my rate was very reasonable, but I also included all of my travel costs because I wanted to get that first destination wedding under my belt. And once you get that first one under your belt, or the second or third, you then have a body of work that just makes it easier to convert those inquiries when they come through. Okay, great question though. Ellen O'Brien Photography. When quoting for destination weddings, do you take into account the non-working days you are there? Um, kind of yes and no. So. I've always had the belief that I am going to charge the higher end of the market because I don't want to be a volume wedding shooter. So by that, I mean my non-travel days are kind of factored into my day rate anyway. If I was at the lower end of the market and I was shooting 40, 50, 60 weddings a year, then yes, I would absolutely be charging a little extra for those travel days. Um, because ultimately you're missing out. If your business model is to shoot a, a, you know, a, a greater volume of weddings, 
and therefore you're not charging three, four, five thousand pounds a wedding, you know, you have to remind yourself that you could be missing out on work back in your, you know, local area. Because you're gonna be away for four days. Three at the three at the moment, three at minimum, you're gonna be away. So that's potentially three weddings you could shoot back home and you're you're only gonna shoot one abroad. So I would absolutely if you're depending on where you're at price point wise, I would certainly be charging something for those travel days. But again, unless unless this is something you want to move into and you want to chart, you want to start shooting abroad more, then yeah, maybe you, you just offer the same rate and you try and use that as a carrot on a stick to try and get some get some inquiries in. There's no easy way. There's no easy way of answering that. It's, it, it is each to their own, really. Okay, next one. Viola J Photography. Do you need insurance? Yes, you do. You shouldn't be a professional photographer without it. Sim simple as that. Um, and actually, your insurance should cover you worldwide. Okay, Viola J Photography again. Timings, late ceremonies, using the light. So. Yeah, the one key difference for me with weddings abroad is often that the ceremony is much later in the day. And I actually, I actually prefer it. I know couples kind of think, well, you want to make the most of the day. But actually, what it does by having a ceremony later in the day is, first off, it's, it's partly driven by the heat and the weather. You would not want to be getting married at one, two o'clock because it's just going to be unbearable. But actually what it does is it, it condenses that day and it basically means that there's no kind of lull. There's no sort of downtime during the, the wedding reception. So what happens is you might start at lunchtime, you, you, know, you have a bit of bridal and groom prep, whatever it might be, and it slowly builds up. And then once the ceremony starts at say four o'clock, you, you don't stop until midnight, one in the morning, because there is always something going on. The timings and the schedule is much tighter and you just have to be prepared to go all guns blazing for eight hours. I mean, I personally love it. I wouldn't swap it for anything, but yeah, just make the most of that time because you don't get to do it again. You know, you just have to make the most of it. Um, and that comes by just working relentlessly. Um, okay, let me just open up Instagram again. Here we go. So Katie Holland Photography, how do you prepare for a destination wedding when you've never been to that place before? So, how do you prepare for a destination wedding when you've never been to that place before? Do you know what? I don't think it matters. I, I honestly don't. The principles and the ideas that I take with me to a wedding in Tuscany or whether it's in Aberdeen or it's in the Cotswolds, it's still the same. I'm still looking for the same triggers and visual aesthetic that I create anywhere. Um, the one thing I would say is, in terms of preparing, I would, I'd be here the day before, so I'll always meet the couple at the venue. We'll do a little run through, rehearsal, whatever it might be. We'll talk about timings. Um, and I will also just do like a little site recce and just have a little look around. And I'll, I'll, just, I'll just earmark a few kind of locations and spots that I'm like, oh, that would be great for portraits. Oh, this is a little shot here that I could kind of look at. But ultimately on the day, once you, once that day kicks in and the, the roller coaster starts, it's, it's the same as it would be back home. I am just prepared to move and to change and to adapt as the day moves, changes and adapts. That is, that's ultimately for me, that's the, the skill of a wedding photographer is to be able to, <clears throat> is to be able to adapt constantly, very quickly and to evolve and move and shift and to interpret that day as it unfolds in front of you. So kind of like a previous question, it just, it becomes about keeping yourself active and moving and busy and always looking for opportunity because you don't know when that's going to arrive. Okay, story.cabin. Why would British couples book you over finding a local photographer? Good question. So two things, I think. First off is style. That is it. For, well, that's probably the first one and probably the most important one. There are varying styles across the world globally. There are all sorts of nuances and varieties of approach to wedding photography. I have mine. It's unique to me. There are people that are kind of similar-ish, but I, I am, my, my work is me. Um, and I often think when you go abroad, sometimes, and I'm generalizing here, 
the standard might not be what it is back home. Um, there are also very differing styles. So this is just from experience. <clears throat> and obviously there are always exceptions to this, but Italian wedding photographers have a much more classic, stylized, heavily posed approach to wedding photography. That's not me, that's not my style. And ultimately, that isn't what my couples want. And ultimately, they're, you know, they're coming from, most of them are coming from Britain. There are plenty come from the States, but they don't want that overly posed, stylized form of wedding photography. They want natural, relaxed, informal, creative. And, and ultimately, that's, that's really what I'm trying to offer. The second thing is they want that relationship and connection. And I think when you go abroad, having that relationship and connection with somebody that is not fluent or comfortable in, in, in English can often be a slight barrier. I'm not saying that's a key reason. I don't think it is the, the key reason. There are plenty of great photographers in Italy and France that speak good English, but I think they just want that extra layer of connection with you and making you f make, they want to feel comfortable. And if they get it and they truly get it, they understand how important that is to the photography. Great question. Um, Georgia, Rachel, photography, how do you organically reach the world of destination wedding clients? So kind of like a previous question. Obviously it becomes easier once you've got those first few under your belt. Um, but, you know, when I first started, it was about showing, showing the best work I could possibly show, trying to feature on a few blogs. So I, I paid and advertised on a couple of blogs that were international. Um, but now, you know, fast forward sort of what, 10 years down the line, there are now, you know, destination workshops that you can go on. I think it's really important that you have a, an element of travel photography in your work. So, you know, for example, if you look at my good friend, Igor Denver, you know, he's very big on showing, you know, locations and, and just documenting, you know, international travel. Even if he's shooting a wedding, he'll find the time to go and showcase the location or the venues, because that ultimately is going to reflect in his work. Um, so destination workshops, I think, would be a great way of, of, of getting some work under your belt that shows you to be an international wedding photographer of some sort. Um, and don't be afraid to reach out to some blogs and see what you can, see what you can advertise on and see what's out there. Um, you know, you need to be able to monitor it. That's the key. You need to be able to check that that traffic, if you are going to spend money on advertising, you need to know that you're going to be able to get a return on it. So being able to track it either through you know, a contact form on your website that says, where did you find me? Or, you know, making sure that you go into your analytics and you're able to assess what kind of volumes of traffic are coming in from that link are absolutely key. Um, next question, Alex Bates Photography. How much gear is a suspicious amount if you're on holiday? Okay, so I think the first thing to note here is that, you know, you do, trim, you do need to trim your kit down if you're traveling abroad. I mean, I'm not a huge kit user anyway. Um, but I will leave a couple of bits of kit at home that I don't need. So I come here with three lenses, a 35, an 85, and a 15 to 35. I'll have one flash gun, um, batteries, charger, an LED panel, and that is, that is ultimately about it. There's not, there's not a huge amount more. You do not want to be coming through airport security with, you know, three pellet cases of gear. It's just not, it's not advisable. Um, T. Clarkey, how do you not spend all profits on pizza? I mean, Toby knows me. Toby knows me quite well. It's, um, it's a challenge. It's definitely a challenge. Um, ben Lee Photography, additional costs you might not think about. Great question. So I charge a flat rate travel fee for Europe of now £750. Um, and for this trip in Tuscany, I reckon I'll have spent almost £800 to travel here, all of the hidden extras. So one of the things I always forget about are, you know, like my airport parking when I get to, you know, Stansted Airport, for example. The, but the big hidden cost for me that I always forget about is food. Like remind, reminding myself that I need to eat out here. Obviously, when I'm at the wedding, I get looked after and that's great. But for, for, for example, yesterday I came to the venue, we did a site recce and I'm just here then. I've got time to kill because we're gonna do pre-wedding evening later on. So there's no point in going anywhere. And obviously we're, you know, we're quite isolated. There's not a supermarket just down the road. So I had to just order something because I was starving from the snack menu. And the mozzarella and tomato salad was 22 euros. Now, 
you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to order it. I need to eat, and it is what it is. There's nothing I can do about that. Um, would I choose to spend 22 euros on a mozzarella and tomato salad, no matter how nice it was? I mean, it was lovely. It was really good. I really enjoyed it, but probably not. I wouldn't, um, because ultimately it's a business expense. And actually, what happened is the bride, very, very kindly, if she's watching this, just to say it didn't go unnoticed and there's a huge amount of gratitude from me for it, just said, put it on our tab, put it on our room. And do you know what? Sometimes it's little gestures like that from a couple that make you go, I'm gonna work hard for these guys today. Like, like I work hard anyway, but I'm gonna find that extra one, two percent today to give them because, because they looked after me. Um, so if you're a bride or groom watching this or a couple and you get married abroad, never ever forget to just look after your photographer because you get it back in spades. Um, but yeah, food is often the additional cost that I wouldn't think about. Okay, um, benbarron.uk. Insurance, gear, and how to keep cool in hot weather. Like seriously, shit gets hot. Okay, so insurance we've talked about. Yes, you need it. It should cover you internationally as well. Um, gear we've talked about, but definitely trim it down and keep it to, you know, the bare minimum really. Um, and in terms of keeping cool in hot weather, yeah, don't forget your factor 50. Um, the first thing I do when I get somewhere abroad is I will go to the local supermarket and I will buy myself six liters of water. Like staying hydrated is the very first thing that you should be doing, making sure that you're keeping plenty of fluids on board. Um, you do not want to be working in heat with sunstroke or you know dehydration it's not a good place to be um, another little tip actually and i didn't used to do this for the first year or two is to take a baseball cap um, i i was a bit unsure at first as to whether it's appropriate to wear a baseball cap to a wedding um, but actually when you are working in heat and sun you do not want to be you know feeling the after effects of that later on that day or even the day after you need to be looking after yourself you're there to do a job and to be professional and looking after yourself is your absolute priority. You can't do your job if you make yourself unwell. So um, yeah, just make sure you're hydrated, wearing a cap, make sure you've got some cream on, um, and then just maybe accepting that it's gonna get hot. Like that is it, you, there isn't much you can do about it. But just try and take little breaks, look for pockets of shade as well throughout the day, um, and just manage it as best you can. Okay, um, labahimphotography.uk. Trends in destination weddings, your favourite countries, and destinations that are currently popular, or the ones who will be. Okay, first question, trends in destination weddings. Um, trends in destination weddings, trends, trends, trends. I don't know if there are any. Do you know what, I don't really pay a huge amount of attention to trends in, in wedding photography in general. Um, I think over the last year or so, there's definitely been more of a trend to, um, uh, and this isn't from a style point of view, but, but from a photography point of view, I'm gonna answer it. You know, capturing a bit of film, uh, like film photography. So, um, you know, in the UK, I'll, I'll, I will take a medium format camera to, to the occasional wedding if they pay for it, but abroad, I don't tend to do that, but I would like to do it this year. Um, I think another trend going forward is photographers being able to capture a bit more video at a wedding and that's something again that I'm going to be exploring this year and will be coming up in a video shortly. Um, my favourite countries, Ibiza and I just love it, I love Italy. I think, I think it's just one of those, it's one of those countries that just ticks every box for me. The landscape, the weather, the people the food and the wine, you know, even like last night at the, at the pre-wedding dinner, you know, the Italians never let you go hungry. They are, they are always very much like more food. Do you want more food? And that's my kind of, that's my kind of place. Okay. Destinations that are currently popular or the ones that will be. I mean, I think Italy's always gonna be popular. I don't, I don't see that ever changing. Um, I mean, I've been to Mallorca for a wedding before. That was beautiful as well. Um, and I think the Balearic Islands are just incredible for weddings. So I don't know if there are any that will increase in popularity, but, but they're, my, they're my favorites. Okay, 
Hidden Treasures Ibiza, speak of Ibiza weddings, who's the best wedding planner in Ibiza? Well, I'll have to, I'll have, to have a think about that one. Best wedding planner in Ibiza. Hmm. I might, might come back to that one. Worst unexpected, well, I've got to pay at expense whilst out there. Again, kind of mentioned that earlier with Ben's question, food. But also things like toll roads and toll booths um, and airport parking. Okay, that's it. They're the quick fire questions wrapped up. Don't know if it's a bit echo in here, but we'll find out when we get back to the studio. Um, I'm gonna go and kit up, get myself ready, get a coffee. I've already eyed the pastries up downstairs, so I'm gonna go and get a pastry. And it's shoot day, so cheers guys. If you like what we're doing, hit subscribe, like, follow, do all that stuff. I'll see you again soon. Yeah.